Sure. Um, one second. So welcome everybody. Um, uh, we start today with our fourth lecture. Uh, before starting, uh, is there any question from the previous lecture or any doubt? Okay. So not a doubt, but a clarification. Uh, so the entropy definition, which uh, based on trajectory, clearly is not a state dependent variable, but uh, in thermodynamics, entropy is like a state dependent variable, right? Why do you say it's not state dependent variable? In a sense, like it depends only on the uh, like state dependent means initial and final uh, state, right? Here, uh, yes. it depends on the whole trajectory. If you look at, I mean. Yeah, yeah, but uh, be careful. Uh, one thing is the total entropy production which depends on the whole trajectory. And the other thing is the system entropy. The system entropy is what, what it's a state function in uh, microscopic thermodynamics, classical thermodynamics. And here, in a way, it depends only on the initial and the final state, but uh, it is through P. So it's P of X zero and P of X T at the final time. So you could say, okay, it doesn't depend it depends only on the initial and the final, but it depends on the P, and the P depends on the whole trajectory. So in reality, it's not the case, okay? So it is different, uh, essentially. So you have P of X0 and P of XT and logarithms. This is what, what is entering in the equation. So it's not yeah. exactly the same thing as, um, as in classical thermodynamics, okay? Okay. okay but be careful, be careful when, when you identify what is a state function and what is not? Uh, and be careful co in confusing system entropy with entropy production. Entropy production is related to the probability for the entire trajectory. And system entropy is a, for the, to related to the probability at the initial time and to the probability of the final of, um, value of the trajectory at the final time. Okay, it depends. So the system entropy depends on the solution of the Fokker-Planck or of the master equation at time zero and at time t. Whereas the entropy production on the solution at any at all intermediate times, all right? Okay. Yes. Yes. Oh. Okay. I I can go later in the in the whiteboard and we discuss this if, if you want. Okay. 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 Sir. Okay. Any other question? Right. Uh, so then uh, I'll go ahead. Um, uh, today, yesterday we were a bit slower than expected. So. Uh, I broke the lecture of partition relations in two parts. So today is the second part. It will be Sorry. much more relaxed. I Sorry. had, uh, I still had that question about uh, last time you mentioned uh, in the reverse trajectory, we start with a uh, uh, XT, which is at equilibrium. But uh, one thing is not clear to me in experiment, uh, you measure, so you start with X0, let's say, and go to XT. And at XT, you act, uh, you're gonna um, measure the work till XT only, right? Okay, okay. Uh, I have the answer for this in the next slide. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. So, be patient. <laughs> okay. So this this is a recap from what I explained yesterday. Crookes and Yarsinski. And, and and this is the setup. The setup is the following. You have a forward process. The forward process it starts in, in an equilibrium state with control parameter uh, lambda zero. This is what you see in the blue curve below. So we need a, an equilibrium time, and we we start with a Hamiltonian with a control parameter lambda zero. And then we start driving lambda with a protocol lambda t for a finite time tau. This is what this uh, blue line going up uh, means, all right? So we are driving the system. And at some point we stop changing the control parameter and we, fr we freeze the dynamics with this value, which should be lambda tau, okay? So the main point that you have to realize is that in this process, there is only work done on the system in the ramp. In the beginning, in the equilibration, there is no work done on the system because the Hamiltonian is not changing. So keep this in mind, okay? So you start in equilibrium, you drive out of equilibrium, and then you relax to equilibrium. The only work that you care is what happens in the middle, which is starting from equilibrium and ending in non-equilibrium. Very important. Generally in non-equilibrium, unless the process is very slow, then you will end in equilibrium, right? This is the forward process. The backward process is as follows. You start with the Hamiltonian, in, a, in equilibrium, but with a different control parameter, with lambda tau, and you drive it backwards in time. Well, I mean, time goes always forward, but what you're doing is the time reverse protocol. So instead of going from lambda zero to lambda tau, you do from lambda tau to lambda zero, as I show here 
in this uh, red curve on the right, okay? Again, we start in equilibrium, we dive backwards, and we reach a non-equilibrium state, but then we let the system relax to equilibrium. Very important, the only place where you do work is in the run, right? You don't need in the backward process to start in the same X that you ended in the forward process. Very important, okay? I hope this clarifies your question, <laughs> I hope. Yeah, yeah. It's a... All right, all right. So then what you need to do is you measure the work in the ramp in the forward process. This is what I show in the first formula, partial H with respect to lambda D lambda. So you just measure the work in, in, uh, for a single trajectory and you collect histogram of many realizations of the same process, okay? You measure in each of these trajectories, you measure the work from time zero to time tau and you, call, you obtain a histogram or a di distribution. And then you do the same in the backward process. So you have a different initial state from a different equilibrium state. You drive it with this pro protocol and then you collect the work from time zero to time tau. This is what I show in the formula, in the second formula. Okay, just to realize that X dagger is the trajectory that you obtain in this, in this uh, backward experiment. Lambda dagger is the driving in the backward experiment and, and so on. Very simple. It's much more simple than what, what you were thinking about. Okay, this is the setup. And uh, the result is the following. This is what I showed yesterday. The distribution of the work in the forward process. So the probability to get a work for the value of W is related to the probability in the reverse process to get a work of value minus W. So when you plot the histograms, you see, you, you see that they cut in the free energy change. This is a, a good prediction for uh, all these type of models like Langevin or master equations, right? Uh, okay, this is the, the setup for Crookes. For Jarsinski, very important. Okay, uh, give me a second. Just be aware of something. In Crookes, there is two, two physical process, forward and backwards, two protocols. In Jarsinski, there's only the forward protocol, only one protocol. And what we showed, and you can see it very nicely, I, I proved this from this so-called mother fluctuation theorem, but you can also prove Jarsinski from Crookes. So you want to know the average of e to the minus beta work minus free energy. You average with uh, the uh, forward distribution. And then you use in, in the se second line, I'm using Crookes theorem. So I change e to the minus beta dissipation times PFW by P reverse minus W. So what uh, you get is an integral over all work values of the distribution in the backward. And that's one because it's a normalized distribution. So e to the min minus beta w minus delta f on average is one. And as I said, I start and finish in equilibrium. The free energy is not stochastic here. So I can take out from the average delta f and I get that the average of the exponential of the non-equilibrium work equals e to the minus beta the equilibrium free energy change between the initial equilibrium and the final equilibrium, which is not the end of the protocol, is after relaxation, okay? I hope now it's more clear, but uh, it is very important that you realize that all these uh, theorems or relations have assumptions, and the assumptions you have to go through, read the paper carefully and, and understand, okay? This is, in this field, it's more important that you understand things that you are a, like a mathematician, okay? This is concepts and, and physical results, physics, okay? All right, so now I will, uh, for completeness, I will discuss um, experiments that people have done to test these results. So the first experiment, uh, it was a, really a breakthrough. Uh, it was published in Science, which is one of the most uh, important um, uh, journals in, in science, you know, in all fields of science, not only physics. Uh, in this paper, they, they did the following experiment. So you have on the left a, a particle in an optical trap, a second particle connected to a pipette. And what they do is they link DNA between these particles and they pull the DNA. Much like if you, if you take a rope and you pull the rope, okay? But this rope is very small. So it, it, it's affected by fluctuations strongly. So if you pull like this, you won't get the same uh, rope in each of the pulling, but it will be different because of the fluctuations. This is what you see in the in panel B on the top. You see that at, at some 
fast pulling speeds, for example, in the green curves, uh, the, the trajectories that follow the, the force. So here they can measure the force done in, a, in the colloid uh, because the optical trap can be used to sense the force. The force is different in each realization of the same process. So this is a manifestation of fluctuations. And uh, you can use these trajectories to measure the work done in each of the trajectories. And what they get uh, is what you see in the panel D on the right, these are distributions of, of work or of the dissipation for different pulling speeds. And now uh, you can use the formula that I show in the middle, which is just Jarzinski quality, but uh, solving for the F. And you just do e to the minus beta w. Uh, you, you collect values of w, and you do the average not of w, but of e to the minus beta w. You do the average of that quantity, you take the log, you multiply by uh, kBt, and you get the free energy. Uh, this is what is shown in the last figure. It's not, okay, uh, back then uh, experiments were not as precise as now. Uh, so there is an error bar of 0.5 kBTs, which they can argue. And you, they see that the difference between the, the theoretical value of the free energy and or, or what you get from molecular dynamics and what you do from non-equilibrium pooling, is very small. So the theorem was tested with great accuracy in this science paper. Okay, this is for the Asinski quality. And the Asinski quality has, a, has an issue, which is it is dominated by, so this, expo, this average of exponential is dominated by very negative values of the, of the work. So you need to find very rare events to, in order to have a precise measurement of, of the work. So this is, um, let's say, uh, a negative, uh, well, not negative, but it's a shortcoming of, the, of, of the, this equality that you really need to find rare events in order to have a very precise uh, measurement of free energy. All right, that's for uh, Jasinski And for Crookes theorem, there was a very an analogous experiment uh, published in Nature, so also a very uh, big journal here, in which uh, what they did was a very similar experiment, but with uh, an RNA, well, I put here DNA. I think they did with DNA and with RNA, hairpins, in which, okay, you can see top left figure, this is the hairpin. So it's like a rope, which is making like, like a loop and they pull from uh, the two extremes and they open it and close it. So you can see curves of um, opening and closing this herping in different colors. So you see the orange going up and the blue going down. So you, what you see, and it's very important is that there is a hysteresis curve. So it's not the same when, when you do like this and when you go back. And this is a signature of non-equilibrium in a way. So what you can do with this data is measure the work in unfolding and the work in refolding. And these are like, they obey uh, the assumptions of, of Crookes theorem. And you can collect the work in uh, unfolding and refolding and plot the, the histograms. So what you see on the right, uh, you can, for example, look at the, uh, at the red uh, histograms. You see, first of all, the data is not, these are not perfect Gaussian distributions because it is very difficult to, to collect this data. So maybe they have, 20 runs or 50 runs. So you have to come back to real life. It is not a simulation. This is not an equation in the blackboard. This is very difficult to get. Maybe it takes years to, to, to make this experiment. Uh, and what you see is there is a red histogram on the right. This is the distribution of the work in unfolding. And a red histogram on the left with dashed lines, which is the histogram, Crookes theorem. OK, no, it's not Crookes theorem. is probability for minus the work in the reverse process. And you see they cut more or less in 110 kBTs. Then this is done at a given speed, uh, you see, or a given pulling speed, which is 20 picanewton second. You can do this slower. And this is what is shown in the, in the green curve. When you do it slower, the histograms change because you are dissipating at if, uh, less. So the average work is getting closer to the free energy, but still they cut in the same place, the histograms, they cut in 110 kBTs. And when you do it even slower, the histograms get narrower, but they also cut in 100 K, 110 kBTs. So this is a, a, a manifestation of Crookes theorem in a way. They are cutting same, um, same system, but at different pulling speeds. They cut the histograms of the work cut in the same place, which is the free energy change. Uh, and moreover, 
they can compare this cutting point. Uh, well, they put it here in kilocalories small. Uh, you can convert KBTs to kilocalories small very easily. And they can compare with what you get with molecular dynamics. Molecular dynamics is a, you, you do the simulation with all the atoms and molecules of the, of the hairpin. So it's something very, very expensive and precise. And they see that the free energy that you get from, from Crookes theorem is uh, within experimental errors the same as what you get with molecular dynamics. So it's really, really good, uh, this theorem. It's good because you don't need to pull infinitely slowly. You can do this quite fast, which is very practical. And finally, on the bottom right, what you get is the, the logarithm of the ratio between the histogram in, in forward and the histogram in the backward, and they are linear with W, as I showed you uh, yesterday in the theory. So this is what you, something you predict in the theory and something you can see very clear in a very complex experiment because this is not a Lange, just a Langevin equation. It's something much more complicated. It's a biopolymer uh, in water with uh, excluded volume effects, etc. So it's something really nice. That's why this was this paper was in Nature actually. All right. So uh, there were more recent tests. Uh, yesterday I was uh, talking to you about a recent experiment. Well, so not so recent, but we did something like this with optical tweezers. Uh, it is not a, such a now many labs are doing these experiments. So what we do is we have a colloid in, in a trap and then we move it. We move the center of the trap to the right, measure the work, let it relax, move it to the left, measure the work, let it relax, and so on, like this. Okay. You can do this at different temperatures and collect the histograms of the work. This is what you see bottom right. Uh, histograms of the work change when you do uh, the process at different speeds or at different temperatures. And on the left, I showed um, the ratio between the symmetry function. So the ratio between this log of PFW divided by P reverse minus W. And you see the slope is changing because we could do the, the experiment at different temperatures. So the temperature has an effect on changing the, um, you see the, the slope of the of this curve, right? So with this, uh, I finish from here, and I'll uh, I'll now share my whiteboard uh, to continue a little bit with the theory. Uh, sorry, do you see my whiteboard now? Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Okay. So uh, the first thing I'll do, and it's something uh, really nice, it's uh, to explore the consequences of Jarsinski equality. So yesterday I explained that Jarsinski equality says the following: theta w equals uh, e to the minus beta delta f. Okay. In other words, you can also okay. Give me a second because this is not working very well. You can also say that. Uh, exponential of minus beta w minus delta f equals to one, right? Very nice. And now uh, the first consequence that, that comes out, um, it's very simple and it's, it's the second law. And you can see it uh, from the following. So first of all, I, let me discuss that this is a recap of, of mathematics, which is uh, Jensen's um, Jensen's inequality, Jensen's inequality, which says the following. So if you, if you have a convex function, as for example, the exponential function is a convex function like this. Let me call it fc of x, and this is x. Uh, it is very easy to show that um, the value, these are two points, and you take the average of these two points, which is here, the value of the of the convex function at the average, which is something like this, is smaller or equal than the average of the um, between this point and this point, which is the average of f c evaluated at x. Okay, this is just inequality. So this is true for any convex function, and in particular, we can take here e to the x is smaller or equal than average of e to the x. OK, very simple. All right. So now we can apply this inequality to Jasinski's equality. So what we say is that e to the x will be e to the minus beta w minus delta f will be 1. OK, this is e to the minus beta 
W minus delta F, right? And this is greater or equal than E to the minus beta W minus delta F. So the average dissipation comes out here, right? So from this, well, you say E to the minus beta, this is greater, smaller or equal than one. So we are just saying, okay, this is the function E to the minus X. Okay, this is the function e to the minus x versus x. So this, okay, to be greater or equal than one, this is one, this must be negative. Therefore, uh, they are, all the arguments must be negative. So in the end, we get that w minus delta f must be always greater or equal than zero. So applying the antecedent inequality to this Yersinsky's relation, we get the work minus the free energy is greater or equal than zero, which is nothing but the second law. So we get the second law out of this. W greater or equal than delta F. Okay, so Jarsinski equality and Crookes theorem are, in a way, a generalization of the second law because they provide more information than the second law and they give the second law as a corollary. So it's just convexity applied to this uh, equality implies the second law, which I discussed before in my lectures. Okay, just, just simple math from here give you the second one. All right. So now I'll introduce something uh, which I believe is, is more exciting, which is uh, the extent of second law violations. So this you can find in some papers by Chris Jarsinski, which he calls second law violations with a uh, quotation marks, okay? Violations. Okay. So uh, let's uh, recap a little bit and discuss the fact that the distribution of the work when you do a process infinitely slowly as this type of shape. So when the process is done very slowly, it's a Gaussian distribution picked, highly picked at the free energy. However, when you do a, a process faster, you are out of equilibrium. You have here delta F and typically you will have a distribution that will do like this. Okay, this will be W uh, and then you will have, e, this will be P uh, of W. Okay, sometimes I was putting P, F, W, but now there is no reverse process. I, I will just discuss one process. This will be the average work, which will be, so the second law means that the average of this distribution is greater than, than the free energy change. That's the, that's the statement of the second law. And now uh, what is very important is that uh, this region that I put, okay, this region here, it's what it's often called uh, these second law violations in quotation marks. So these are events in which the work done on the system is below the free energy change in all this state, okay? Now this can happen. You can do an experiment and, and find this. So, the question that, uh, okay, so first of all, let me just uh, formalize this close. This is close to equilibrium. P, sorry, I don't need here at the F, uh, P of W, close to equilibrium, gets uh, close to delta W minus delta F. This is close to equilibrium. Equilibrium. And here we will have non-equilibrium. Here, the distribution won't be exactly delta uh, W minus delta F. What, what we get in non-equilibrium is that the average is greater or equal than delta F, okay? And now I will ask the question, which is the following. What is the probability of the left negative tail? So how likely is that we are, for instance, getting values of the work here in this tail? I will call this distance Xi, okay, and Xi will be greater or equal than zero. So I would like to know what is the probability, is the probability that the work, actually I can call it like this PR, it's not the probability density, but it's the probability that the work um, minus delta F is 
smaller or equal than minus xi. Sorry, I, I did a mess here. <laughs> so I have to take this out. Exactly this, okay. What is the probability that work minus free energy change is more or equal than uh, xi? What is the value of this probability? And this is what is called the extent of the second law violations in some of the works by, by Kresjarsinski, right? So I'll try to give uh, an answer to this. And there is a, an elegant way to, to give at least a bound uh, to this quantity. And the elegant way is just using a, a Yersinski equality. So we will do as follows. So I would like to know what is the probability that uh, the work minus the free energy change is smaller or equal than minus xi. Okay, what is this? So this is just the area under the distribution from minus infinity to this value. Just integral minus infinity to delta f minus xi of dw p of w. Okay, this is the definition. This is the definition of what is the probability that the work is below the free energy by a quantity xi, right? So having said this, this is an equality, it's clear. And we can show because in this area here, W minus delta F minus xi is negative here, okay? So work minus free energy is smaller, is smaller than xi. W minus delta F minus xi is negative. So this means that in this area, uh, let me do here a star, in this region, so W minus delta F uh, minus xi, or pl plus xi actually, uh, sorry, plus xi, this is negative, which implies that E to the minus beta W minus delta F minus xi is greater or equal than one. We have this inequality in all this region. So this implies that we can do this here, integral from minus infinity to delta F minus xi of dW e to the minus beta W minus delta F minus xi, okay? Because this is greater than one, so then we can do this inequality and then keep P of W here. Yeah. Okay, so up to here we have a lower bound and now uh, something we can do is delta F is a number, xi is a number, the integral is over dW, so all the Ws stay in, all the things that are not with W, they go out of the integral. So we can say, that this is equal to um, E of beta delta F minus xi, and then integral minus infinity to delta F minus xi dW E minus beta W P of W. Okay, so let me just do this a bit better. Sorry, it's, it's uh, excuse me. Yes. Um, what was the definition of uh, Kisai? Because uh, I was supposed that it is the W minus uh, uh, delta F. No, so Kisai, Kisai is a, a distance. So we are looking at, um, so this point here is W minus delta F minus xi, okay? Ah, uh -huh, I see, okay. Okay, so it's just a distance away from delta f, okay? Okay, thanks. Okay, so just parameter. All right, so uh, we're now um, in this part, which is the integral from minus infinity to delta f minus xi of this. And now we recognize that this is a positive number. This is always a uh, greater or equal than zero. And uh, we can then say that 
all this integral can be bounded by theta delta f minus xi is, um, is smaller or equal than making the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of dw e minus beta w p of w. Okay, because this is a distribution that is always positive. This is always positive. So this integral is larger than this integral. I'm just doing an inequality between this integral and this integral. Okay. So now we are here. Uh, what is this? This is e to the minus beta w p w, and we can apply Crookes theorem. Uh, I didn't call this, okay, I can call this pf. In the beginning I didn't put it, but this is, let me call it forward process. So this one is um, nothing but uh, equal to e beta delta f minus psi, and then integral, uh, well, actually, <laughs> I don't need to, to write it like this. So it's uh, it's very it's very simple that to, to show that this uh, last thing that I obtain is e to the minus beta w um, in the forward process. Okay, I don't even need to to do. Sorry, I, I was a bit uh, exaggerated with the with the notation. I don't need this. Okay, this is just e to the minus beta w and e to the minus beta w following Jasinski equality is e to the beta minus beta delta f. So e beta delta f uh, minus xi, e minus beta delta f. This is the Jasinski equality. So this goes with this, and we get e minus beta xi. And this is a very nice result, uh, you can see, because we are saying the probability of second law violations probability to get the work minus free energy below a given amount is, you see, smaller or equal, smaller or equal than e to the minus beta psi, okay? So in other words, let me just um, recapitulate, probability that work minus the free energy is smaller or equal than minus psi is smaller or equal than e minus beta psi. So this means, uh, well, this means briefly that the left tail of the um, distribution of work is more than exponentially suppressed in the thermodynamically forbidden region, okay? So values of work that are forbidden classically are very unlikely and are forbidden and suppressed more than exponentially. This is what this, this um, uh, result means. So I recapitulate, you have the distribution. This is the average, this is the free energy. So the probability to be uh, below you know, all this area, and this, this distance is xi, is smaller or equal than e minus beta xi, right? I hope this is uh, more or less clear. Uh, okay, if not, please ask me any question. Uh, and, and, and this is um, one of the key consequences of, of the theorem. And now uh, the rest of the lecture, I will um, try to generalize a bit what I, I explained by discussing what is called detailed uh, and integral fluctuation relations for entropy production. So the results I just showed uh, can be also generalized slightly for, to entropy production, which is a stop. So as you see in isothermal systems, the entropy production is work minus free energy. So if I get a theorem for the entropy production and I take the particular case of an isothermal system, I will get a fluctuation theorem for the work and the free energy. They are detailed and integral fluctuation relations for entropy production. Okay, so again, uh, this is uh, explained very well in the paper of Udo Seifert, uh, the same I uh, discussed the other day, is PRL 2005. 2005. 
Um, okay, and the setup is uh, what I also explained uh, in my second lecture. The setup is a non-equilibrium uh, driven by Markovian process in which there are you obtain trajectories, which for example is X, which contains uh, X zero. Sorry, I think you, you left your microphone on uh, Masha Mofidi. <laughs> so there's some noise happening there. XT uh, and the time reverse trajectory will be um, X plus zero to X plus T, which is XT to X zero is the time reversed. And we consider a non-equilibrium driven Markovian process. Sorry. Um, all right. So again, uh, non-equilibrium driven Markovian process. Process which includes um, those that are described by fokker planck equations or those described by master equations. Okay. This is a broad class of systems. So uh, what do you, what can we get here is that if we consider mm, a specific choice of, of initial and final states, we can use again, the so-called uh, model like this one theorem, this one, and uh, show that instead of putting now the dissipation, we can put the entropy reproduction. This is more general than what I showed be, uh, before in my lecture. In my lecture, my previous lecture from yesterday, I put here the dissipation, but I proved everything with um, path probabilities. So it is much easier and, and much more natural to consider the entropy reproduction, which remember is nothing but um, entropy reproduction up to time t or associated to a trajectory x tilde x bar is kb logarithm of the probability for the trajectory divided by the probability in the time reverse process to see the corresponding time reverse trajectory, okay? If you put this here, you can easily, very, very easily prove this um, theorem for functions that are even on the time reversal, okay? Same thing as I explained yesterday. And now if you take, instead of omega, yesterday I took as omega, one of the cases was a delta of w function equal to the w, so, uh, the delta that the work equals to small w. Now you can take something similar, but use uh, omega to be, for example, delta of the total entropy production associated to a trajectory to be equal to s. And uh, delta plus the analogous, as I explained yesterday. If you plug in this here, what you get is a very similar um, theorem as yesterday, but like this. The probability in the forward process that the entropy production uh, up to time t equals to s times e to the minus s divided by kb. Be careful now, he, s is a value, eh? it's, it's a number. Here is a stochastic, well, here is a functional of a trajectory. Here is a number, a dummy variable, you could say, is equal to the probability in the reverse for the entropy production to be equal to minus s. So, same steps as yesterday. This gives the so-called uh, detail factorization theorem for entropy production, probability in the forward, s dot t equals to s divided by uh, density in the backward for entropy production to be equal to minus s equals e s divided by kb. This is the so-called detailed factorization theorem. Okay, this is uh, very very insightful. Sorry for this. Okay. This is the detailed fluctuation theorem for entry flux. Of course, uh, you can consider process with driving like the ones I was uh, introducing yesterday and today, in which you have something like this in the forward and something like this in the backward. This will be driving, but you can also have processes that are out of equilibrium in which the driving is, is constant. So for example, okay, you can have, okay, uh, something like this. This is the forward and this is the backward. So forward and backward are the same process. One example is, for instance, if you think about um, a ring, you have a ring, you have a particle in a ring, and there is a, an homogeneous field, velocity field pushing in this direction. Here, 
there is no driving. The, the, the Hamiltonian is not changing in time. It is a fixed condition of non-equilibrium and the particles, are, a single particle it has more tendency to move to the right than to the left. Sometimes it will jump backwards, but it will do like this and backwards and this, and then backwards and then backwards and then this, okay? It will move more clockwise than counterclockwise. This is called non-equilibrium steady state, which often uh, people write it also like this, non-equilibrium steady state, okay? In this case, the forward and the backward process are the same. So you say lambda plus t equal lambda t. Okay, this is for general uh, driven. So driven, okay. And here I will do for non-equilibrium three states. Uh, the, the reverse process is equal to the forward process and equal to lambda. So it doesn't change in time, but you are out of equilibrium. In this case, forward and reverse are the same process and we write it just like this. P s dot at time t equals to s divided by P s dot t equals to minus s equals, there's the same P here, okay? Very important, same process. Equal so to e. a question in the chat. Yes, please. Um, I, I cannot read the chat. Would you read it because? I can read it to you. Would you please explain please, again please. how can we determine that the backward trajectory is exactly the forward process happening in reverse? Consider the fact that the process is happening in an equilibrium state. Yes, okay, be careful because in this question you are mixing two things, uh, trajectory and process. But, um, okay, let, let me try to explain this um, maybe with an example which I'm trying to find in, in my slides. Uh, one second. Eh? I think in these slides I don't have it, but I think a good picture. One second. Eh? Okay, I'm trying to find a presentation where I have a, a good illustration. So um, a good image is better than 1000 words. This is what you say in Spanish. Um, Okay, so let me stop sharing and I will share something else. Um, share screen, I think this one. Okay, so for instance, uh, if you have, um, sorry, this is something else. Eh? Don't, don't be scared about the formulas and things. If you see the, the, this figure, uh, this is like a roller coaster potential, no? So if you, you could put a particle there and let it relax to the minimum and, and fluctuate there. But you can also put a torque Edgar, around the, the this ring. We don't see the picture. Sorry? We don't see the picture. Ah, sorry. Uh, all right, all right. Uh, you see it now? No, we see numerical tests, uh, Langevin dynamics, uh, and then uh, it's all blank. There's no picture. There's no, there's no picture. Maybe okay. if you don't, if you don't, yeah. if you just show the. Okay, I'll try to. Okay, give me a second. Um, without the full screen. If I you just share, show the PowerPoint um, uh, without the full screen, I think it's okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, you see it now, no? Yes. Okay, so this is a particle in a ring. And uh, if uh, on top of the, having the ring, one has a torque. So if the particle is here, it's feeling a potential, but also a torque. And this torque doesn't change in time. This creates a non-equilibrium steady state because the torque is pushing the particle moving clockwise all the time. Or you can also think about this particle in a ring. There is a torque all the time pushing the particle. So there is some, someone pushing the particle with a net velocity. And this is a non-equilibrium steady state because there is a current. You could have this process without the torque, and that would be an equilibrium uh, uh, motion, okay? No current, a particle will move the same to the right and to the left. But if I have a torque, I have a current, and this is a non-equilibrium steady state. And here, there is no time-dependent change of a potential. It is fixed. There's a non-equilibrium condition, and it's fixed. That's why the forward process and the backward process are the same, because it is not changing in time. Uh, okay, I have an, another something else I could show you. Um, 
Okay, I think I have an illustration in another talk. Okay, um, I think I can also uh, discuss this in my whiteboard. So in other words, when you have a protocol, okay, sorry, this is not very nice, but uh, okay, this will be lambda of t. So you could have different uh, options. So one option is uh, lambda t equal to zero. Okay, so being here. This is, I'm doing nothing. This means equilibrium. Okay, here, uh, this would be zero. Another option is lambda t changes uh, in time um, with following a protocol. Could be, for example, something like this. This is a general non-equilibrium process. Okay, this is a driven process. I'm changing the Hamiltonian. I have a parameter in the Hamiltonian that is changing uh, in time. And, uh, but another case will be, I'm not in equilibrium and I'm fixing the parameter at a value that is non-equilibrium. This is the non-equilibrium steady state. As you see, if I reverse this, this uh, blue line, I get the same thing. So it's the same process forward and backwards. However, if I reverse the, the red line on the top, this is different forward and the reverse. That's why the, we, we use PF and PR. Does this make uh, reply your question? Okay, I cannot uh, see the chat, so I hope. Uh, um, thanks. Okay, <laughs> I see. <laughs> Great. Uh, good. I'm trying my best to explain this. Okay, so uh, so far I proved um, the detailed factorization theorem, which for non-equilibrium state states, which is simpler than general driven, it means the following: so for non-equilibrium state states, it means that um, if you do this non-equilibrium state state many times, you have trajectories of entropy production as a function of t of time, and uh, you will have trajectory like this. The second law tells you there is a positive drift and the probability of this event to be at time t in value s is much, much higher than the probability of, for example, reaching minus s. This is much less likely, okay, than this one. So you will see a lot of trajectories going up. You will see another one coming here and another one coming here. So you will see exponentially more trajectories here with respect to here. And this will depend on which level you look at. Okay, so this is what I, the, the theorem is saying. P uh, S dot equal to S divided by P S dot equal to minus S is E to the S divided by KB. Okay, so the farther I put these barriers, the more different they will be, okay? And be careful on, this is not the first part, it's time, it's something else. It's just to be here at this time, you could have crossed this barrier, very important. Eh? For crossing barriers and first passage, I, can, I will explain in my last lecture, which is part of my recent theory, okay? This is, you can cross. What it means is you are here at time t and you are here at time t, all right? Very good. So now uh, this was the detailed factorization theorem. The integral factorization theorem is just the following e minus s dot t divided by kb. Okay, this you can anticipate this is equal to one, no? This is the same as e to the mi w minus delta f, the same thing. Uh, we will have, have this s dot minus infinity to plus infinity e minus s dot. So now the, the variable, random variable is s dot and then p of s dot. Now I use this. So P S E to the minus S is P S equal to minus S. So this would be D S dot E. Uh, sorry, not like this. <laughs> this is not good. Uh, P, so this is very simple. So P of S dot minus S dot in reality. Okay. And this goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. So this is the same as the as saying the integral of d s dot d s dot from minus infinity to plus infinity, which is one. So this distribution is normalized. So this is one. Therefore, we have this. This is true for non-equilibrium state states and for general Markov process, uh, driven process. But for this type, 
with time dependent driving and for this type okay equal to one this is called the integral fluctuation relation for entropy price integral t why integral because it's obtained from the detail by integrating so just like this integral fluctuation relation uh, for uh, the reply. Of course, I repeat the same thing with Jensen inequality. So Jensen inequality implies, and this implies that the second law, S total time t, is greater or equal than zero, the second law. Okay, very good. So, uh, so far, I think uh, I've gone through almost everything I wanted. Um, just to let you know that s dot has a positive slope. So this is growing. This is what, the, what this means in, in reality. This is growing in time on, on average. If you do the average of many, you will do like this. So it's a process that grows. And uh, you should be a bit amazed by this because imagine you have a process that grows in time. You have s dot versus t, and this is a process that okay, it has fluctuations, but it has a tendency to grow. Okay, so when you have something that grows with time, and you take a negative exponential, so e to the minus s dot. Okay, s dot grows. It's growing. So e to the minus s. I would expect this to to go down, no. <laughs> With something like this. So remember, s dot at zero equals to zero. So this means that e to the minus s dot at zero equals to one. So it starts, this one starts from zero, this one starts from one. But it, on average, this one grows like this. This is the average of many trajectories of entropy production. But here, this process is very special. The, the one that generates e minus s dot that is s dot in the production grows, but is negative exponential is totally flat. It's not changing in time. So it is equal to one of the time. Okay, that's uh, you should be a bit surprised and you should realize that there is something special in this process in entropy production. Typically, when you have stochastic process that grows, typically it's negative exponential decreases typically but not in this case and this is uh, something very very deep in reality and it's it has something some connections uh, well, this is because and you will see in my last lecture lecture 10 this is related to something that is called martingales okay so we will show that um, and this is my, my recent uh, theory with my collaborators that this process is very very special and it is a martingale process in non-equilibrium steady state, okay? However, okay, this will be the, in the last, this will be a very technical lecture at the end, uh, in which I will show you uh, very, very recent results and, uh, and experiments as well. Uh, but please um, keep in mind that this is true also for driven processes, not only for um, non-equilibrium steady states, but also for driven processes, as it is uh, just in case. So more or less, this is it. I wanted just to explore um, consequences of these uh, theorems and, and I discuss a little bit. So I, I leave the floor for questions if there is any. Um, Hello, good questions. Sir, can you explain uh, why in the like beginning uh, for the experimental uh, uh, proof of Jarzinski relation, you said the rare uh, like the rare uh, fluctuations are important. I didn't get that part. Well, because you need to do this, no? Okay, so you need to calculate something like this. Uh, well, actually, this, uh, okay, so this is the integral tw e minus beta w p f of w okay so somehow uh, you see this as an integral but in reality 
you have to see that uh, you can do this from with histograms, for example, and you will have a sum of uh, what is the probability to get a work of WWI. Uh, you are doing a binning and e to the minus beta wi. So the, the idea is the following, that when you make this sum, which values of the work will be dominant? It's also related it? to somehow to, to large deviation. So when w is very negative, this exponential will be very, very large. You see? Yeah, yeah. Therefore, the negative values of work will be dominant in this, in this average. But sir, probability distribution, it could be, uh, that itself could be exponentially decaying, right? I mean... Uh, could be. It depends on the case. It depends on the, on the physical process. Yeah. It depends. Uh, there are many examples. Uh, I, I can send you a reference if you want, where um, this, um, this type of average, if you do it very naively, just um, with regular beams, um, uh, this can can be, this average is highly biased as well. So even though, uh, even if you'd have infinite samples, there will be a statistical bias in this, in this average. So you have to be very careful on how you, how you estimate this, okay? And there has been a lot of uh, research on, on estimating and using the statistical quality properly with uh, proper um, estimates of the probability distribution and so on. I can send you some papers. It is not an open area of debate right now, but. Ten years ago, there was a lot of people working on this. So uh, you have to be very careful. Also, on the following, uh, I, didn't, I told you that, OK, you have Crookes relation. So you have forward like this, PF, W, and then uh, the reverse. And I was saying, OK, very nice. So the reverse is cutting here. Great, no? But uh, just realize something that when you do this type of experiments, you are saying that, okay, here is W and here is delta F, okay? So this will work as long as these two are close enough. If you do the process infinitely fast, well, you will have one histogram here, one histogram here. This will be the average of work and here will be delta F. So what do you do here? Imagine you do an experiment and you have histograms like this. So <laughs> this is a big problem. So this means that these theorems are useful, but uh, they have a limitation. They have a limitation. So when W is, if this is, for example, uh, 100 kBTs, and I, I suffered this problem myself in, in, in my research in, in many times, and this is um, 10 kBTs, uh, you have a problem, you will never see. In a short experiment, you will never see this. So you have to use um, some techniques to extrapolate these histograms and see what did we cut. And it's also a big problem. So you have to take into account these are universal relations, but they have a limitation for uh, applications. And, and the limitation is that we cannot use this if we do the process infinitely fast. This uh, doesn't work. Plus, okay, the, you, you can create the turbulence, the fluid, etc. So it's not, it's not so easy. Okay, so close to equilibrium, this is easy to, to see. And out of equilibrium, but not so far. Okay. Okay, okay. just one last question uh, related to this. Uh, so uh, uh, negative entropy uh, paths, I mean, uh, trajectories are very rare, right? So is it okay to say that? It depends on the system. Depends on the system because- but, Okay, total entropy negative is a rare. Okay, you're saying it still depends on- It's, it's rare, but imagine I, I give you a model that is, I don't know, three state model, for example, two and three. And now I tell you the rates are as follows. This rate uh, is um, two seconds minus one. And this is, um, 1.5 seconds minus one. Okay, this is also two. This is two, and these are 1.5, 1.5. Okay. What is a, a trajectory of negative entropy? So a trajectory of positive entropy will be uh, going with the flow. So, for example, going from one to two, 
and, and like this, and like this. This is a cycle, and this is a, an entropy uh, stored in this cycle, which is, okay, you have done a cycle, you return to one, so the system entropy is zero here. So the, sorry, the only uh, contribution, sorry, <laughs> the only contribution that you have is three times the heat. So it will be three times logarithm of a uh, forward rate divided by backward rate, two divided by 1.5. Okay, and this is positive, right? But now you can have a backward jump, a backward cycle, because there, this is two and this is 1.5. They are very close to each other. So you can have a trajectory going like this. Yeah. Right? So it's not that rare. It depends on the, on the rates strongly. So if you are close to equilibrium, you have much more likelihood to see negative entropy events, which will be a cycle against the, the flow somehow. And in that case, you will have a stot will be a minus three log of two divided by 1.5 in this cycle, okay? And the probability of this, and, and, and this one is very easy to calculate. It's just, um, you know, it's a mark of chain, so it's so the product of yeah. the transition rates, all right? So, so it's not that difficult. What, what counts is how asymmetric are the rates, how different are the rates in one direction and in the other. Yeah, uh, yeah, I understand. Uh, actually, the, my question was uh, how, I mean, somehow these trajectories are related to uh, works which are really rare in the sense uh, when you calculate work from the same trajectory. Uh, mm -hmm. and uh, entropy from that same trajectory. Uh, rare entropy uh, trajectories are somehow related to rare work, I mean, uh, trajectories. Is, is, I mean, well, uh, <laughs> you, you, you don't need to think so much. So, so think about this, this, uh, this example. So negative entropy is trajectories that are uncommon and positive entropy is trajectories that are common. So when you see a trajectory, Actually, this is given in, in the formula. So the formula says entropy, the entropy production of a trajectory is Kb, the logarithm for the probability of the trajectory divided by the probability of the time reversal. So if you see a typical trajectory, this will be positive because the, it's, it's, uh, the probability of the atypical is smaller than of the typical. But if you see an atypical, a typical trajectory, the atypical this one will be smaller than one, so it will be negative, okay? Because its time reversal will be more likely. So it's, it's all about um, how typical is the trajectory with respect to its, its time mirror. Okay. Right? Then, of course, we, we relate then this to, to, to physics because every jump here, uh, we relate it to heat because we say Kij divided by Kji is related to the, to the heat, E minus beta Q I to J. Yeah. So this is the way we, we, we connect to physics, you know. Yeah, so we can connect it to entropy, I, I, I get that, but we, like, it's not, uh, like, it, it's not a logical statement to say that uh, high work trajectories will also be, uh, I mean, they will be rare, but not because of this reason. No, no, they will be also from this reason, also as well, because, uh, with the work, uh, what I showed you the other day is that the work for a trajectory minus the free energy change is divided by the temperature is the same as a stot. Okay. Huh. In an isothermal system, this is equal to this. So it, there is a relation between work and irreversibility directly. So there is as well. So in a there sense, is. these two, I mean, uh, trajectories for rare trajectories work and the entropy are like rare events, right? In the sense, if the, yes. yeah, yeah, okay. But, but, but a rare event in the dynamics, it's also a rare event in the work, okay? So if it's rare in, in, uh, in the probability, it implies that it, you get a, a rare event in the work, which is negative work. So, so if a trajectory is very rare, this is very negative, and the work is very negative, very much, very small with respect to, to the type. That's the point. Yeah. Uh, you, you can work with simple examples. For example, the other day I was talking with about the optical, optical tweezer that you drag at fixed velocity. You work, you you uh, you write the equation for the work, and you will see rare rare events as is when the particle uh, it's advancing. So instead of lagging behind when the particle is here, are rare events, 
And these are events where the work is negative. They're extracting work. So you can really see the best way you see is with examples. The best. Yeah. Right. Try, try to work this example and you will see. Okay. So any other question? So if not, then uh, we thank uh, Edgar again for uh, his lectures. And uh, we meet uh, next week. Have a nice weekend. Have a nice weekend and see you on Monday. I will discuss engines on Monday. So stop share.